Welcome back to Wise Men Company, everybody. Today we're talking fire. That's right. And remember, for all of you YouTube gurus out there, safety first. Make sure you have your safety goggles, your fire extinguisher, and fireproof gloves. I don't care about any of that. All right, guys. So it's definitely a wise decision to carry a fire kit, to have on you or in your bag some form of making fire. Uh, heat is critical for survival. Um, no, what kind of fire starting stuff do we have here today? All right, so we have a, a wide variety of different ways that uh, we can start fires here. Um, we have the chemical um, starting fire using uh, um, mixing chemicals, and so you have a uh, exothermic reaction with that. We've got the uh, um, uh, using a ferro rod. Uh, both of us have different knives with, uh, you know, mine's a light my fire um, from Moro with the in the uh, uh, in the handle. Uh, um, I have a uh, cheap magnesium. Uh, and you shave off the magnesium uh, again. A ferro rod to strike to start the magnesium, and obviously a lighter. Uh, um, Probably the easiest form, guys. I mean, and the easiest to carry is just a big lighter. A dime a dozen and carry a million of them. So we have, uh, um, and then an electrical reaction um, using uh, um, some four-out steel wool and a battery. Uh, then you've got your, uh, um, what you're going to strike with your ferro rods, your sparkers. We have um, probably both Ben and I's favorite, which is cotton balls with uh, petroleum jelly, um, Vaseline, and uh, um, dryer lint um, is another great option for, for doing those. Yep. Guys, like I said, creating fire out in the wilderness, your hands are cold, uh, windy conditions, wet, is not as always easy as it seems. I mean, a lot of these YouTube videos out, out there and shows out there, these bushcrafters have been doing this for a long time and they just light stuff up immediately. Ben and I were on a camping trip once and we decided we had just gotten strikers and we wanted to see which one of us could get a fire going first. Why not, right? And uh, um, so it was, wasn't quite dark yet and sometime after dark we decided to use matches. Yep, because we just couldn't get it and we didn't know why. And a lot of it goes into your prep and being prepared initially off the bat to make it as easy on yourself as possible. So I'm going to bring the camera in closer um, and we're going to have a few other cameras on this pan right here. So this is uh, uh, magnesium and what the magnesium is, is it's sort of like your tinder. Uh, um, well, it's to, it's to light your tinder. It burns really hot. So you have to scrape off really fine uh, um, shavings. This is just really cheap. Uh, two ninety nine again. I think Harbor Freight um, is where I got that. And you can use this, and you know, so you have to shave this all onto whatever you're trying to start. And you just make a little pile. Yeah, out of it. you make a little pile out of it. So here you can see you've got the magnesium, and I mean, it really, that's not even really enough to get an actual fire going, but you should be able to see here when he sparks on this. And there you Burned go. Burned all up. Right. Yep. So you have to make a fairly significant pile. Uh, um, I carry this in my fishing kit usually, uh, um, and I have one in, in my bag. If, uh, if you had no other option, this would be great, but it does take time. So if you're already cold and wet, things like that, uh, um, it's going to be frustrating because you really need to spend some time shaving that off. You need to get a good pile and you need to get it started. Now, the nice thing about it is that if it is wet, the stuff will burn. Yep. Uh, um, and so if you get a good enough pile of it, you can light up even wet, uh, um, some wet tinder or damp tinder sure. uh, um, with it. And guys, I apologize for my uh, striking. I don't have much room to work in here without bumping everything, so I'm trying to be as delicate as possible. All right, let's move on to the next one. A chemical reaction. And so for that, uh, um, I'm going to show a uh, uh, potassium uh, um, potassium permanganate. Um, it's pop perm. Um, this is actually used for... Uh, uh, it's a oxi uh, um, an oxidizer that uh, removes iron and things. It's used for water filters. So you can find this at uh, Pool Supply, uh, things like that. I just ordered it online at Amazon. The uh, great thing about this is that there's other uses for this. You may even have some already in one of your uh, um, uh, kits. 
uh, because it can be used as a water purifier as well. Yeah. And you mix that with just some regular glycerin. Uh, um, and uh, glycerin is essentially a very high concentrate of sugar water. Now this one uh, um, burns really amazing, uh, but it does take a little while because it's a, it's a chemical reaction. So you, know, you put in a pile of this, uh, um, of the potassium permanganate. It's a, um, also, this is used, the potassium permanganate is used um, in survival kits as a snow marker. It, um, just a very small amount will uh, um, mark a huge area of snow. Uh, um, so if you're stranded in the snow, if you're in a winter area, this is a great thing to carry in your kit. Uh, um, and then we just add some, some glycerin into this. And while we're waiting, it takes about one minute for this to uh, um, to fire up. I actually uh, uh, make these little uh, um, carrying uh, uh, devices for this out of old, uh, for the tops of soda bottles. Uh, just take them apart, take like a old credit card or whatever, glue those together um, with some epoxy. And it makes a great little carrying in case you can carry one side the potassium permanganate and carry on the other side you can carry your, your glycerin. So as you can see, once this does light up, it, it lights up, uh, um, but it does burn out fairly quickly. Uh, um, so if you have uh, your tinder redding, you've got some dried grasses and leaves and other stuff. Feather uh, sticks. Small, small, yeah, feather sticks, twigs, things like that, and you have that ready, you can get that right in there uh, um, and, and ready to go. So uh, um, another fun one at home uh, um, is you're uh, uh, using steel wool and a battery. Now typically you do this with a 9 volt. Uh, the thing is is that not a lot of people have 9 volts just laying around anymore. Um, even in your uh, um, uh, fire alarms and yeah, things like that. Yeah, typically people had them in those, but a lot of those are getting hardwired in now, uh, so you don't have that. But most people do have, you know, a cordless drill at home uh, um, or something along those lines and it's the same concept now this is 18 volts so this is uh, it's quite a bit but again what you're doing is essentially creating a short and you can see look at that spark up and that'll burn pretty well now the thing is is that most people don't carry around steel wool in your in your pack but the nice thing is, is that this is great if you're at home and you're in an emergency situation and for some unknown reason you don't have a lighter or matches or something at home, uh, you can light this up and it will, uh, um, you know, it's, it's also fun. You can show your kids that you can start a fire with, with steel wool. But you can see how it works. Now again, this one is, it's a little bit harder with this because of the way the battery's in there, but... It'll, it'll light up every single time that we touch it. Also, if you hook some of this steel wool up to a car battery, it's a great form of torture. <laughs> Dryer lint. Uh, um, this, is, this is almost the greatest way to catch a fire uh, um, that there is. And it's why dryers, uh, why it can be so dangerous, uh, um, why so many dryers catch fire. Uh, uh, how easy it is to get a fire going. Very little work. Um, it does burn quickly, uh, um, but as you can see, it burns faster or longer than a couple of the other ways. I, again, you have time to get your, your uh, feather sticks and your tinder in there and, and get it going. Now, probably my favorite method uh, um, of getting a fire going um, if I, you know, I always carry these in my bag, uh, um, is the cotton ball uh, um, soaked in petroleum jelly. Now, you can make these really easily just by taking cotton balls and sort of uh, throwing them in some petroleum jelly, rolling them around. But I prefer to okay, open it up a little bit. Oh, got it going. It's actually a little bit easier. Uh, um, they tend to 
get a little hard uh, when they're you know you're compact so you want to get sort of open it a little bit so that you get some of the fibers showing but I take these and I melt petroleum jelly down in a pan and then put the cotton balls in and let them sort of soak it up and the thing is like you can actually just take a cotton ball in half uh, um, and light it up uh, it, it'll last but this will burn now for minutes uh, um, and even if you could get a feather stick going with this you can actually blow this out maybe or put it out get that fire extinguisher but the thing is is that you if you got your fire going already, you blow it out, you can actually save that. Um, yeah. And you'd be able to start another fire with it later. Um, but that's why I say, like, you can tear that in half. You can, uh, um, you can do all kinds of things uh, uh, to, to extend them. And that's why it's nice to melt the petroleum jelly before you uh, um, and, and soak it in because it gets throughout the entire cotton ball versus just on the outside with the dipping it in and moving it around method. All right, there you go, guys. Those are some different ways to start a fire. Um, hopefully, you guys learned a little something. Um, you can take something away from this and add it to your fire kit. Remember, uh, two is one and one is none, and that's especially essential with starting fires. So make sure you have multiple options. Make sure you have your tinder. Also, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down here and subscribe to our channel so that you can uh, get the upcoming videos that we have coming out. Yep, and guys, we want to hear from you. Let us know in the comments what you think about fire starting, what you thought about this video. We want to engage with you guys out there. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. We'll see you on the next video. See ya. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Only you can start them too.